Star Wars Land is going to be great and so is Toy Story Land, but what's going to happen when nobody cares about those movies anymore? So the question comes from subscriber Drummer Master, and Drummer Master asks, with the upcoming Star Wars Land expansion and Toy Story Land expansion, what do you think Disney will do when these films get outdated? I think when we look at a ride in this situation, it's easy to give it a new overlay or replace it, but when we're talking about a whole land, this could cause big problems for Disney. I thought this was an interesting question because uh, it's true. This isn't the sort of thing that Disney's ever dealt with before. They were never really in the business of creating entire themed lands based on one property. So yeah, when you did have to replace an attraction, all you had to do is replace that one attraction. So what does happen in the instance where, you know, the entirety of Toy Story becomes irrelevant or Star Wars or Avatar? Um, I think there are two answers to this question. So I think the first answer is like, they won't. Like it's Toy Story, it's Star Wars. Star Wars is a franchise that has been wildly popular since the 1970s. Uh, I think out of all of them, that is the one that is going to be safest. Toy Story, not that old, but again, mid nineties, you know, we're going over 20 years at this point. Uh, I think it's got the staying power. I think the biggest risk comes with Pandora and Avatar Land, right? There's a franchise that has had one movie. We know that there are four more coming. They might do well, they might not do well. So like what happens if nobody cares about Avatar 10 years from now? And I think that's where the second answer comes in. And I don't think it's a matter of them scrambling to retheme the whole area. I think it just becomes an Avatar land. It just stays Avatar land. And to that, I point towards Splash Mountain. Now, many people, if you're watching this, you're a Disney fan, so you probably know that Splash Mountain is themed after the classic Disney film Song of the South, right? It's got the characters from it and the song from it. But I would guess that the average Disney guest doesn't know what Song of the South is. Uh, they know those characters from Splash Mountain. They know the song from Splash Mountain, and that's Splash Mountain the Ride has almost taken over ownership of that property from the film. And so I think that's what ends up happening. If like Avatar 10 years from now just sort of falls off the face of the earth, and it would take longer than that, right? I think 10 years from now people will still remember Avatar. They might not care, but they'll remember it. Uh, but maybe 30, 40 years from now, nobody remembers what Avatar is. I think at that point, then Avatar land just becomes that land in Disney. And, you know, maybe the hardcore fans know that it's based on this movie series. And so I think that puts them in a safe position. And again, with like Toy Story and Star Wars, I think they're in a safe position where they're just never really going to have to worry about them ever falling out of like, uh, you know, the public eye because it's like, it's Star Wars. Our next question comes from The Bacon Jake and The Bacon Jake asks, if you could pick one park to put a TTA type of ride in it, which one would it be? And for the answer to this question, I'm actually going to answer it with an answer that another subscriber has given. And that comes from Islander Fan 80 who says, do you think it would be practical to have people movers in between parks that are close to each other, like Epcot and Hollywood Studios? Uh, I saw this answer after the fact, but that was basically gonna be my answer. I wouldn't put a TTA inside the park somewhere. I would put a TTA outside of the parks, connecting the parks, you know. Uh, the People Mover Ride system was originally developed uh, by Walt Disney as a means of transporting people around Epcot the city, back when Epcot was going to be a city. And so from its inception, it was always meant to be a transportation system. They just sort of found space for it in the parks and made, making it an attraction. But, you know, I think if we, they were to ever expand on the concept, the best way to go about doing it would be to actually fulfilling its original purpose by making it a transportation method. And, you know, there's all these rumors recently of the gondolas that might end up coming to Walt Disney World, and who knows if they're true or not, but I would like to think that instead of gondolas, they'd put a TTA there, because that'd be really cool, and it would be like making Walt's dream come true a little bit. Our next question comes from Billy Morehouse, and Billy asks, what is your opinion on the two water parks at Walt Disney World? Do you go to them on all of your trips? I've never been to the water parks and may look into them in a future trip. Um, I'm not against them. I don't really go to them much. I'm not a big water park person. I, I've been to them. Uh, I think they're great. I think as far as water parks go, they're really cool. Um, 
I'm just not the type of person who would like my idea of like uh, a good time at a pool is just like relaxing by a hotel pool. I don't really need the water park uh, element to it. I think another part of that is I tend to go in the off season, like in the fall and winter. And so while it is still nice and warm in Florida, it's not hot enough that I feel like I need to spend a day or half a day uh, at a water park area. But you know, as far as water parks go, they're really good. And if you like that sort of stuff, you like the slides and, and the wave pools and stuff like that, I would highly suggest it. I tend to lean towards Typhoon Lagoon over Blizzard Beach, mainly because uh, I'm from the Northeast. We get snow up here and I hate it. <laughs> so the last thing I wanna do is go to a water park that like emulates snow. I'd rather go to the Typhoon Lagoon where it's a little bit more tropical. Our next question comes from Nicktoon Maniac, and Nicktoon Maniac asks, why did Disney change Reboot Ralph to Wreck-It Ralph? So if you don't know what they're talking about, uh, Wreck-It Ralph is a concept that's actually been in the works for a really long time. You know, it came out a couple of years ago, but it was, I believe, uh, conceptualized in the late 80s, and it just, for one reason or another, never ended up happening, or they pushed it back, and then by the time, uh, you know, the 2010s rolled around, it finally started... Uh, to happen. Um, why did they change it? I couldn't find anything official online that explains the name uh, change. Uh, Reboot Ralph actually wasn't the original name. I think there was another name before it. I think it was High Score. Uh, so clearly the name evolved over time. My best guess, if I had to try and take a shot at why they renamed it, is that I think marketers would have assumed that a movie called Reboot Ralph would have sounded too computer-like. You know, you associate rebooting with uh, computers. I think recently, more than ever, you associate the word reboot with things like movie franchises. And so I think it lost a little bit of its relevancy to the concept of a video game. Now, of course, Wreck-It Ralph doesn't really evoke any, um, you know, connection to video games, but that's just the name of the game he was in. Um, but that's why I think they did it. And I think on some level, you think reboot, you think computers, and I, as crazy as that might sound, I think that alone might have turned people off of the movie. So that would be my guess, but uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll let us know one day. Our next question comes from Xander Borg, and Xander asks, with Marvel Studios partnering with Sony and giving us Spider-Man in Civil War, and this year his own standalone film, do you think there's a possibility of them partnering with Fox and giving the Marvel Cinematic Universe Fantastic Four and or X-Men? Or I don't know, partner th partnering with Universal and giving the parks a Marvel land? No, I don't think they're going to do it. Um, it's an interesting thought though, right? Because seeing them partner and work with Sony on Spider-Man shows that they're not, you know, looking to own everything completely, right? The movie is actually coming out under the Sony label. They're just sort of co-producing it. Um, and I think as a fan, we would all jump to think, well, now get the X-Men involved and get, you know, all these other Marvel franchises that they don't have the movie rights to, uh, involved. And, uh, I think they won't do it for two reasons. You've got X-Men, which I think while they're not doing as well as the Disney Marvel films, still do well enough that Fox probably isn't looking to give up part of the money that they would be making on these movies. Um, and then on the other hand, you have Fantastic Four, which isn't doing well and like had multiple failed attempts. Uh, and I think Fox would be more than willing to give up those rights or share those rights. But I think on the flip side of that, Disney wouldn't want to touch it because now when it comes to movies and the Fantastic Four, you just think of those two awful movies. So like, why would they want to like risk sort of tainting the the Disney Marvel world by bringing the Fantastic Four into the fold. So for those reasons, I don't think it'll happen. Maybe one day in the future, if like the like steam on X-Men starts to fall off and Fox starts to struggle with that franchise, maybe, but um, I don't think anytime soon. And then our final question this week comes from Keenan Hill. And Keenan asks, I've recently noticed that Disney has somewhat ignored some movies. For example, my favorite, Chicken Little. I don't exactly understand why they would do this. Can you give me a reason why you think so? What movies can you think of that have been ignored? So this, like a lot of more negatively leaning uh, questions, is something that I don't think Disney would ever officially comment on. They're never gonna come out and say, this is why we're not supporting Chicken Little. 
uh, because I think Disney, like any company, tries to sort of focus on the positives. So they'll focus on the movies that are doing well as opposed to ones that don't or don't get enough representation. Uh, but I think the realistic guess in this scenario, as unfun as it is, is that it just didn't do as well. Like Chicken Little financially was not the powerhouse that some of these other films are. It, money speaks and Disney is a company that is trying to make money. And so when Frozen is like an unprecedented success that brings in billions of dollars that they weren't expecting, you're gonna see them put them in the parades and put them in the fireworks shows and make an attraction. Whereas a movie like Chicken Little, which doesn't do that, will get ignored. And I think uh, as fans, it, we don't wanna think of that too often because you know, Disney is about the magic and the fun and creating memories, but they are also a business at the end of the day and they have to make those decisions. Anyway, thank you all for the amazing questions this week. My question for all of you guys is what favorite Disney movie of yours do you feel is underrepresented? Whether it's in the parks or merchandise or sequels, let me know in the comments below. You could also let me know on Twitter. I'm at Rob Plays. I want to thank you all for watching. Whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it. And if you want to see more Disney videos like this, all you have to do is hit that subscribe video because I do three a week. And I'll see you next time for the next Disney Q&A. Bye, everybody. Thank you.